how early today we're at the hospital getting actually the port put in that is uh, basically the, the line that they do the chemotherapy in. Uh, it's a week from now before I start the chemo, but it's kind of a stressful thing because this is like the first step, right? Like you know that you're getting this put in, which means that chemo is about to start, which is a really frightening thing, but uh, I don't know exactly what the procedure is here. I don't think it takes that long, maybe a couple hours, something like that. So uh, yeah, let's go do it. We have Gabby here, AKA replacement for my mom. And we're gonna teach her how to do things here at the zoo, starting with feeding Pepper. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, welcome. Are you, are you ready? No. You gotta do it like mom. Okay. You gotta I got do it, it like I got mom. it, I got it. That's, that's the energy. <laughs> All right, but now I, I don't have it. The door's okay. open, so like. Pepper's gonna come up here. Oh yeah. So, oh, he's giving me any instructions, okay. by the way. Any this is exactly how it went with your dad and your mom, actually, and I'm not joking. Again, you haven't even taught me anything. You just go and you pick her up right midsection, like You're this. Terrible. Go, go around terrible. like this. You go around like this and pick her up like that. This is actually good because you won't have to get and wet in the water. And if she comes at you, what do you do? She's not going to. No, if she comes at me, what do I do? She doesn't do that. Terrible teacher. Pepper! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good a little job. bit more bass. Yeah, a little bit more bass. Pepper! <laughs> Pepper! On the side of the mouth. Good yeah. job. I did the bump bump. Open. Give more enthusiasm. I'm a little scared. Do a little high. Like this. Pepper! Up, up! Like that, drop it in there. Yeah! yeah. 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 That's how we do it. Okay, so it wants the rest. No, no. Oh. We have. Eight more pieces. Okay. Up, 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 up. Wait till up, she gets up. up. Okay, good. Throw it in. Oh, sorry, Pepper. It's okay. Don't reach for it. You'll get it. There you go. It's getting better. How does it feel? This is the first time feeding a big I, alligator. I can't breathe, honestly. Perfect. <laughs> it happens. Okay. Come on, Pepper. Pepper. That's oh, good. Come, That's... come on. Enough. In the mouth, I Gabby. Scared. In the mouth. In the mouth. Stay. Oh, Stay. She does look very Aww. cute right now. Aww. Get it. In the mouth. Yeah. yeah. Kobe! <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. It went in the mouth, I'll give you that. Yeah, I touched it. Good job. I did good, right? You did really good, actually. Yeah, you just got one last okay. thing you gotta do. What? You have to get salt back in here. I have my phone's ringing. I gotta. Okay. Take care of that. So, we wish Brian all the best of luck today during his procedure, but we still have stuff to do here, of course. Today, we're gonna be doing some training with some of the animals that don't come out all the time and that are newer, like our girl Freya here. There you go, good girl. So the idea with Freya was because salt's getting so big that we want kids to still have the experience, the chance to hold the albino alligator, so we got Freya. Now the only downside it's is it's hard to work with an animal if they're not ready to eat yet. And that was the problem we were having. Freya was every time we started handling her, she didn't want to eat. Rawr. All right, let go of the tongs. Let go of the tongs. There you go. So now what we're doing is we're still making sure that she's eating and then the days that we don't feed her, the days that we handle it. Come on Freya, come on. There we go. So the reason why we do the food call is because we want Freya to be comfortable and know that there's food. We want her to come to the front of the enclosure like salt does. So the whole idea said, get her calm. There we go. So we want her to act like salt does. We can pick her up, we can hold her without her wiggling, we want her mouth to be closed, and then we can do the training. Here we go, over here. Oh, good girl. And maybe we have some people feed her on the weekends. I don't know yet, but the idea is to have her calm, relaxed, eating well, and comfortable in this situation. Speaking of salt, we still have a lot of work to do with her because she's gonna get a lot bigger and we have a lot more training. So we got some more milk frog eggs. I've got some that have already hatched out over here. I tried to pull as many of the eggs as I could so I didn't have to deal with catching tadpoles out of the enclosure, but that didn't work out. So we're gonna have to go catch some tadpoles out of the other enclosure. <laughs> I don't think he's happy. I don't know, he's like, don't come in here. The little <laughs> areas that look like jelly and things. The like caviar. Are, yeah, those are our eggs. So I'm gonna be honest, they're kind of a pain in the butt to remove. See, that one wasn't too bad. So now, I know there's two tadpoles in here from the last time that they laid eggs. The tadpoles over here developed a lot slower, so they're just getting their legs, but I need to find those two so we can get them into a tub. How are you gonna do that? I don't know. It's so mucky in here too. Because they've been having tadpoles in here, we can't really get all the water out and clean it until we're done with frog babies, so. There is a filter in here, it's just like the bottom gets mucky. Nope, I got a snail. That one's a more developed one too. Okay, right, so here's this little guy with legs. Oh no. 
still got his little tail. He'll be out of the water probably by tomorrow. All right, so I think I've got everything that I can get for right now. The water has got to settle down a bit, so probably tomorrow I'll come back and see if I can find baby tadpoles. And then I know there was another guy in there with legs, so we'll have to check out for him and probably look around to make sure he hasn't already got out of the water. Getting ready to go back here in the next uh, like 10 minutes or so to get this port put in. They kind of showed me the process. They basically go through like your neck area, go down and put this uh, ba like basically like a catheter that goes into the artery by your heart. That way when they're doing the chemo, the uh, treatment is going right into your heart, your main arteries, uh, to be able to circulate the best it can. Hopefully it's going to be easy 20 to 30 minute procedure. They don't put you completely out, but you're kind of in a weird, you know, sedated situation. So hopefully um, on the other side, I'll feel okay. And uh, hopefully I can go to work later on today. Pick up Perdita. Okay, so like the game plan though. Hold the door open. Okay. Where's her head? Her head is right here okay. and she's in shed. She's sleeping right now. Okay. Which is good. She's not paying attention to you. And just scoop around that lump right there and just pick her up. And once she's up, you're fine. So just, it's the getting her up. Yeah, you okay. can't hesitate. Good. I hesitated. Okay. Yep. <laughs> okay. Go, good job. Perfect, pick it, pick it up. Now put your right hand a little bit lower, lift her up oh, and over Jesus, your head. She's heavy. Just like that. Okay. And then just keep bringing her out very oh gently. Gosh, she's still heavy. She'll kind of just wrap you up like that. Okay. We're friends. You held. You actually picked up your first big snake. I know, it's really, it was a lot. It's just heavy. That was, that was it. That's it. It's very simple, actually. Say you're working at the Reptarium. Yep. Hi, I would like to hold Perdita, please. <clears throat> okay. May I hold Perdita, please? Sure, I'm working on it. I'm just, I'm thinking of my best plan of action here. I can do this. Yeah, you can do that. I am a little right. impatient, though. I understand, but you I have want to be. A picture. Perdita is. There's Ten minutes left in my hour. So I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm like... going to talk to your boss. Okay, but can you help me? Lift it up. I'm. Hi. Mm. Hi. Hi. Okay, I'm just okay. actually not here strong enough. Okay. <gasps> wow. She's so cool. You want me to take a picture? I've never been this close to a pretty girl before. Okay. okay. Oh, she touched me. <laughs> Tell me like a fact or two about her. What am I holding right now? She's a snake. Oh, really? Mm. Her name's Ferdita and she's from in what type of snake is she? From Indonesia. Don't... Really? Reticulated ball python. She's from Indonesia. <clears throat> Wait. South Afri Africa. No ball. No ball. Reticulated python. Mm. Says... These are the big ones. Oh, she's going to get really big. Yeah. Like 16 feet. Wow, really? No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. On second thought, persistence pays off. I actually got this little guy after the water settled down a little bit. So yay! We got two little guys that will be frogs probably by tomorrow. Wow. Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. Over here. There she goes. So on the cell, basically what we're gonna do, <laughs> it's a Monday, dude. This is no, this is not normal. So what we've been doing is we have Salty Station on the floor. Salty, come on, up, come on. Up, uh, come on. To your when she goes across the street, what we're gonna have her do is having people feed Salty because nobody's gonna be able to pick her up, right? Salty, up, come on, up here, come up. On. There it is. So the idea would to have, would to be, I can't even talk today. <laughs> there is no try. Have Saul come to the front door, have her stand with her mouth open, and then kids can throw food into her mouth. Just like this. Good girl. Or that happened. At least we know we're in good hands with trainer Mike. Oh my. I wasn't the quarterback on the football team, you know what I'm saying? Mike, you should tell him this story. <laughs> On the dog? <laughs> yeah. Dude, she won't let it go. About like when she was a kid, she got scared of cats. And I told her the story, she thinks it's funny. So my cousin had a dog, but it had both legs <laughs> amputated in the back. It hates kids. So we were up at my cousin's <laughs> house, and when you when they took it outside. <laughs> So when I took it outside, they hooked it on the chain and it had roam in the yard or whatever. The dog was on that side. We ran. My cousin's like, just run. I took off. So I'm running as fast as I can. The dog lifts up his butt, runs on his right legs, and then bites my cat. And that traumatized me as a kid. Like, and she no, thinks it's the funniest thing I'm ever. Glad you have to be at running to have a legless dog catch you. It was eight. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, I was crying. Sorry, Matilda's getting a bath. I had a scar. <laughs> the way he described it. I don't like when she starts kicking her legs and then they pinch my fingers. I don't like that. And then back, 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 oh. and down. Okay. There you go. And then most people, ow, son of a biscuit. I'm so out of breath. So most people don't know this, and I might even test Connie on this. 
I've actually never done this before with Matilda, so this is pretty exciting. I bet you all this money right here. Come Don't on. ask me where I get it from, okay? I think it's like $50 in singles, so you could have a really fun time with this cash. How do Aldabratoruses drink? Through their mouth. Through their... Well, what is she doing right through her nose? So they actually taste the water with their mouth to make sure it's clean, and then they use their nose like a shark. <gasps> could you imagine? No, but you lost the money, so that's okay. Like I see the tortoises drink water. They shove their whole- No, 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 only that. So the other ones will still do it, but they just hold their breath while they're drinking. Just oh, like okay. we do, because if, like, if you try to breathe while drinking water, you drown yourself. Have you ever like accidentally snorted water in your nose? Like You jump in the pool and it reverses and it suction. And it hurts so Yeah, it burns, bad. they do that for fun. Just out of surgery, um, the doctor said everything went completely fine, so that's good. I'm a little numbed up right now, but I can tell that the port is, is going to be definitely pretty tender. They said it could take seven to ten days to heal up there, but it's definitely a weird feeling. There's no doubt about that, so, but at least everything went good. Now I just got to recover for a few and then hopefully feel up to heading to work. I don't know what's going on, guys, but across the street, there's construction guys and steel beams. Let's go investigate. Dang it, I spilled coffee. <laughs> That's steel. All right, so we have a bunch of steel beams here. I know that there was footings poured a little while back before my dad's everything with my dad. I don't know if he said, let's go ahead and build the front of the building. I'm not sure what they're doing right now. The beams are primed so that they can stay out in weather for quite a while. So that's a good thing. I think we should probably call dad to see what's going on. Across the street, there's a bunch of steel beams getting like loaded in to the building and in the parking lot. Is there, what's going on? So we did order the steel for the front of the building and we paid for it before we kind of put a stop on the construction to just see what was gonna happen. Okay. But, uh, but we had already paid for them, so that steel was gonna get delivered no matter what. Uh, now the question is, is just, you know, when do we press the go button to have them actually start constructing the outside of the, the building itself, you know? Okay. But, uh, but yeah, that, that steel was bought and paid for prior to, to my diagnosis, so, uh, so ah. they, they had to bring it out, yeah. All right, just checking. We were, uh, we weren't sure if you just said go. And we're like, all right, cool. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I've got to make that decision relatively quickly, but I still am on the fence a little bit. All right, sounds good. Miss you. We'll see you when you get here. Okay, I'll be here soon. All right, bye. All right, don't worry. We got it under control. He hung up. Do you want him on you? probably not a good idea. Well, huh? why'd you offer you? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we don't make this a bad idea. We should station them on a rock. Let's go ahead and start to cut Toothless's nails. They're getting pretty long. I'm not gonna cut them too short. He's still gonna be able to climb. We have to do this every couple months. It's honestly monitor depending how much they're climbing, how much they're moving. So it does a pretty good job of keeping them short. Okay, baby. He's doing pretty good. So this is very similar to cutting a dog's nails. Just like dogs, they have a quick inside. You cut too short and get the quick, it will bleed and honestly what we're doing is we're just taking off the hook like i said we're still going to leave a lot of his nails so he can climb around his enclosure see this is the nail and then he just has a little hook so that little hook right there boom just gonna cut that right off toothless and frosty they're both males frosty doesn't really like other monitors by his enclosure and then toothless likes to go antagonize everybody else so he will also do it to uh, elvis so and then we <laughs> pick the best spot to do this but it's okay they need the exposure but we never let them out two at a time for that reason dang yeah. these are crazy okay, okay baby okay like, Dragon. you know the craziest God. thing that he's doing right now he's kind of like face. salivating oh. Salivating. Because, salivating. Isn't that crazy? Oh yeah, it's kind of like how uh, dogs do. Like Maybe he's cook. Super excited. And you're like, Let's okay. see. Is he dripping? Not really dripping, but you can oh, see. Yeah, it out, right? Oh yeah, he's definitely. Definitely. He's like. Mm -hmm. Good job, guys. Quadruple high five. In the middle. Everybody, meet on. One, two, right. three. Ow. <laughs> oh, oh, I love. You love. You're loving that water, ain't you, girlie? Like, <laughs> they're getting me what? what I love your little piece. Convince me this thing is not a Pokemon. Look at that foot. So one more last rinse down for Matilda, get all that extra dust and dirt off of her. And then I think we're just gonna let her chill in here until she's, you know, done drinking or she just doesn't want to be in here anymore. And then we'll just let her roam around because we know there's a nice big pee coming. I'm gonna clean it up. Yeah. And there's the pool leak. I don't know where it's coming from. Probably like the pool or something. No kidding. I'm bad at math. Oh, there's his wee wee. Yeah. <laughs> Dragging it in. Look, 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 look. There you go, Tosky. 
So like I mentioned, as of now, we just basically have a shell of a building, a lot of ideas in our head that are floating around, a lot of drawings and a lot of, you know, my vision is that everything is completely done and I can just, you know, I can sense it, you know, and it's so cool. So we have a ways to go, guys, but I'm really convinced we're gonna get there. And when we get there, this is gonna be something that touches people's hearts for a long, long time. And by the way, I did wanna mention, Lori really, really wanted me to tell you guys this, is that we're gonna make sure, because you guys are helping us get to this, that it's not all about profit for us, for Lori and my family, and that we're gonna be giving back, right? So a percentage of all the proceeds that we make here, we're gonna pick something. I don't know if it'll be pancreatic cancer, I don't know if it'll be an animal, maybe it'll be a little bit of both, but we're definitely gonna be giving back so that we can kind of make up for your guys helping us fund this project. Again, I just can't thank you enough, and I know we're gonna get there. Brian, I got something to break your day up. Oh, here we go. Oh my gosh, are these the first leopard gecko eggs of the year? <laughs> oh my gosh, this is crazy. It's I can't believe first hole, isn't it? Well, <laughs> compared to what we used to, yeah, we used to do you know, five, six hundred eggs at a time or something like that. It's a little bit different, but this year's groups are just really refined, huh? Oh yeah, for sure. And we got some that I'm super excited about, some of the dark ones laid, that tangerine group that I was super oh, excited okay, about cool. too. Well, that's awesome. Well, it's going to be a smaller year for leopard geckos, but a pretty awesome year. So I guess the year is officially started. Thank you so much. <laughs> Good, I got purple socks on, purple shirt on. I got a purple scrunchie in. <laughs> You're all out. So now that this procedure is done, I have seven days until I start my first treatment of chemo. And uh, I'm definitely freaked out about it. There's no doubt about it. It's a really heavy course of chemo. It's only every two weeks. So I'm hoping that I will get beat up maybe at the worst for the first part of it. And the second part, I will feel okay and back to normal. So there might be a chance that here in a week or so, you guys are gonna miss me for at least a day or two, but I'm gonna do my best best to come to work every single day I can. Even if I feel really cruddy, I want to be here because I want to be around my animals and I want to keep you guys in the loop as well. For now, no more doctor's appointments for another week and then the real tough stuff starts.